At Sea Jarvis Insurance Agency, we have a heart for horses and for the people involved in their care, breeding, and training. The Jarvis Agency has been owned and operated by us, a family of horsemen, since it was founded. Since 1946, we have taken a personal interest in the lives and livelihoods of horse owners and equine entrepreneurs, giving us a unique understanding of the needs specific to horse owners as well as those in equine-related businesses. Through our International Bloodstock Agency, we are able to insure your family, friend, or your multi-million dollar stallion with individually tailored policies that cover your exact needs. Whether your investment is an American Saddlebred World Champion Gated Horse, Morgan Grand National Park Horse, Cobtail Hackney Pony, or a Backyard Companion, C. Jarvis provides the very best coverage available. And our unparalleled service allows us to offer equine coverage not only locally, but nationally and internationally. Jarvis Insurance Agency provides total insurance protection for ranches and farms, as well as major breeding and training centers responsible for hundreds of horses and clients. Now we have taken our coverage a step further to you, the professional or non-professional horseman. Our new worldwide accident policy covers injuries on or off the job, indemnifying you with weekly compensation. Our number one goal is to provide you with the best possible service. To attain that goal, we employ a staff of professionally trained agents who share our commitment, our knowledge, and our expertise. For details, check us out on the web at www.jarvisinsurance.com. Then give us a call. We'd love to help you protect your equine dreams. from OKC, it's Saturday night. OKC, the place to be. Woo! One, two, three, OKC. OKC! Hi, Sherry. Hi, Senior Carlos.
we are going to do a shout out to Joe Lavery. We want to say hi all the way in California. Hi, Joe Lavery. We love you, baby. Say hi to Joe. Hi, Joe. One, two, three. Okay, see. One, two, three. Okay, see. OKC is the place to be. One, two, three, OKC. <laughs> OKC is the place to be. Departure, arrival, check in, explore, new places, new faces, dig in, wow, savor, unwind. Count on us to give you all the ways to make the most of every stay. Be a weekender at Hilton Garden Inn. Mr. Brown, it's been a year and you just look wonderful. How's life been treating you? Great. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. And, um, okay, introduce full name and what is your capacity in uh, Western Dressage? My name's Guy Brown and I'm uh, still the president of WDAA, uh, Western Dressage. Okay, and uh, give me an update. What has happened in the last year? We had a great chat last year with you and Ellen DeBella and we were in uh, one ring away and uh, things were going superbly, but I'm sure a lot has been accomplished in the last year. Give me an update. Well, we're still growing very rapidly. Uh, right now, our membership is growing at a rate of 44%. Um, we're having more and more shows. We had uh, an extremely successful uh, judges training program initiated this year, uh, starting in three phases, starting in January with a clinic, followed up by um, uh, some video judging um, and scoring, and then ultimately a USEF who will license the judges. WDAA doesn't license officials, USEF will. What's the criterion by which one applies for said judge's license? Well, um, it's not a, a difficult process, but it is a, a rigid process. And the best way to find out is to go to our website at uh, westerndressageassociation.org and uh, hit the tab for education and it gives all the details. Okay, great. So and in addition to that judges program, uh, we've had a, a number of other events this year. We had our first ever world show last year, soon after this uh, Morgan Grand National show. At what location was it? That was in Tulsa, right after the Arabian Nationals. We would have been happy with 50 or 60 rides. We wanted to get off on a good foot. We ended up with 138, so we scrambled. And our second one's coming up here uh, in 
November 1st and 2nd, we figured we better double up. So we doubled the number of rings and the number of judges and everything. Back in Tulsa? Back in Tulsa. And uh, we opened up entries, and two weeks later, we had uh, 368 rides. We're in four arenas, three buildings, and we're running like crazy trying to fulfill everybody's desires. So. Well, even with my meager, meager math skills, that sounds like you're really kicking it. That's fantastic. Yeah, and entries aren't closed yet, but right now we have over 108 horses. Uh, I don't know how many different riders, but we typically average about three to three and a half rides per horse. So. Yeah. Now, uh, what's the Morgan population in those entries? How many Morgans are you looking at? Boy, I, uh, I wish I could answer that question, Conky. I'm not sure I really know. I do know that we have a very mixed batch. At our first world show, we had everything from Aztecas to mules to ponies, quarter horses, Arabians, Andalusians, Frisians. We had them all, and, and a lot of Morgans, of course. That's kind of where, where it all got started. Yep. Exactly. They're very, very well suited for it. They're, you know, they're smart and agile and, and, uh, you, and the riders love the concept and, uh, you know, and you've embraced it very nicely and, and made it accessible, you know, to the Morgan people. So. Well, we have a, we have a great board of directors. Uh, we added three new uh, directors. We're at capacity now, according to our bylaws. Uh, we also added a gated division. So we're now offering gated classes. Yep. Uh, and of course, uh, we're the ones that wrote, wrote the rules and wrote the test. So uh, everybody else out there that's riding Western dressage is uh, probably going to be using our tests and rules ultimately. So yep. we're happy about that. But it, it's a big effort, and we got good people handling it. Well, I, it's, we're absolutely thrilled about it. It makes another just a brilliant market that, you know, it's a win-win for everybody. The breeders have another place where they can reach out and, yep. and market their horses, and uh, that makes everybody happy. Yeah. My ultimate goal is to be uh, exporting horses to Europe rather than importing horses from Europe. So. Well, take a while. well, and the interesting thing is our carriage driving Morgans have always excelled on an international basis. And, uh, you know, we certainly have aspired for that with them as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, when it doesn't happen, then we just continue to go over and beat them yeah. in Europe. And uh, Buy but, them or beat them. <laughs> see, that's the thing. That's the thing. Uh, I've got another question that, that I always like to ask you. Is there anyone else participating at this horse show that's related to you and has a big job here? Uh, I believe my wife is here. I don't see much of her, but uh, yeah, she's here, yeah. and I, she's one of the judges. I think she's, uh, I don't know what division she's judging, probably Hunter and Western or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, her, and her name is Karen Homer Brown, and we love her, and you are a lucky man to have yeah, that's her. that's true, that's true. Okay. And I'm particularly lucky because six days ago was the 48th month anniversary of her diagnosis, and she's clean, 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 everything's good with all the physicians, all the radiologists, all the oncologists, so it's all good with Karen. Well, in October is, you know, the month of being, you know, grateful for everyone who's, you know, been in that uh, situation. And, and it's always a miracle that, you know, that we get to talk about it and we still have the people that we love. And I'm sure it's because of your support. Well, there's, she has a lot of support. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Conky. My pleasure. Listen, have a great show. And um, do you mind if we come and look you up over at the, the uh, Western Dressage Ring later on in the week? Please do. Thank Please you do. so much. Have a super week. Love you. Hi, gals. How we doing this morning? Good, how are you? Live from uh, OKC. It's Saturday night, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> and what are we getting ready for here with your with your braiding uh, endeavors? And it's taken two of you to do it. It looks beautiful. Thank you. We're getting ready for carriage turnout. Okay. And what's this horse's name? This is Topper. Carrie Top Hat. Very nice. And uh, what kind of braids do you call these? These are very unique. This is lattice work braid. It is beautiful. Uh, when okay, so what uh, happens in the uh, competition? What kind of class? What does what does Topper have to do? It's a carriage class, and it's turnout, which means you want to go in, be as elegant and pretty, and and just polished and turned out. So it's polished. It sounds like it's pretty labor intensive. Who do you have to shine the buggy and the brass and the harness as well? Yes, lots of lots of leather to clean and lots of carriages to clean. Well, you're doing a great job, and you are in the best mood ever. Yes, have a wonderful time. Mwah. This is my little buddy, Caitlin, from the Sunshine State, and it's nice and sunny at home, and we're here in the rain, aren't we? It's freezing. I, understandably so, but you'll do great. You'll warm up when you get on your nice mare. What are you getting ready to go in? I'm getting ready to go in the saddle seat equitation 13 and under. Well, good luck, my darling.
Deb Paisley from the Sunshine State. I get to see you lots, don't I, Deb, in various functions uh, in sunny Florida. Yes, we do. And uh, Deb in, and I usually participate in, the last time I saw you was at our um, regional handicap riding games, and Debbie is the judge, and I'm the announcer, and we have a wonderful time, and uh, it's, it just is such a, a great place to be to have a reality check and make us appreciate uh, these crazy shows like this, huh? Yes, it is. Okay, and then in the real world, Deb also is a horse Holler, is that what you call your job, horse transportation? Mm -hmm. yep. Specialist, right? Oh, of course. <laughs> and so tell me, Deb, hauling horses from Florida all the way to Oklahoma City um, and other long distance shows, because I know you haul the horses of other disciplines, uh, what sort of preparations do you advise the people to put in place before you do a long distance haul? It just depends if they're um, ready for a show. They're usually fit enough to, to accommodate the 24 hours or so driving. Um, and always make sure that they're watered in front and and uh, hayed and you know if they're physically fit they're usually pretty good. Now do you prefer driving straight through or do you prefer stopping at different places along the way and uh, try to give them a rest break? Well we drive straight through. Uh, we do stop every four to six hours to make sure the waters are fresh um, because it, you take liability of taking them on and off the trailers if you lay over somewhere or something like that. So. Now, what about leg wraps? Do, do any of your people like to use leg wraps? And if they do, what is your advice? Do you prefer wrapping their legs or no? 90% of the people can't wrap correctly, so I don't. Um, our hunter-jumper people do not wrap in the hind legs if they're shipping because they get hot and they sweat and then they kick. Um, our air people and Morgan people, 90% of them don't wrap at all. Yep. Okay, now what about uh, uh, stable sheets uh, covering the horse's hair coats when you're shipping a long distance? In a long distance, they're better off to go naked um, because of they overheat more than they, you know, the horses overheat more than they do, and the cool and comfort of being outside, fresh air is the best thing for them. Yep. And and your vehicles are uh, so beautiful and, and high tech that uh, you're able to regulate the ventilation by, you know, your windows and your vents to keep them comfortable. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, what about, do you recommend um, uh, oiling them or any preventive type nutritional regimens before you go on some of these long trips? I have a couple horses that we do regulate oil constantly um, because we know they have a colic issues. Um, but otherwise, if we, uh, uh, I have some horses that don't drink at all that we electrolyte a couple days before and get them drinking. Yep. But otherwise, yeah, they're pretty good. Yep. And do you hang hay bags? you want hay bags in front of them the whole time or not so much? Um, our show horses, we always have hay bags in front of them. Our standard bred race horses, they don't put anything in front of them. They don't even put water. They just water them hands on. It's it's so interesting because there's several schools of thought, and when you talk to different people, uh, you you know you experience different opinions, and and uh, they all seem to have a, a wonderful success rate, or they still wouldn't be in the business. So, but thank you for your information, and I know you do a great job, and and uh, I love that you're in Florida, and uh, uh, the horse business has been very good for your uh, gals. Do you think that uh, because of the the raising your gals with horses has been beneficial? Yes. Um, the horses are the best thing you can bring up any kids with. Yep. Absolutely. Well, you are a darling girl, and uh, Brenda Varney, is, uh, she's been in the biz a long time and, and does very, very well, and we're, uh, we're glad that you help her out in Florida in the wintertime. Well, thank you very much. And hi to hubby and the girls for me. I will. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Uh, Horse Show Wire is so proud to present a new fun fundraising concept that we call Pick Sixth, and that's S-I-X-T-H. We don't want you to confuse it with the thoroughbred exacta betting, which is uh, pick six horses. You only have to pick one, but what you have to do is uh, write down the number of the exhibitor who is going to be sixth place in a designated class here in the Coliseum at the uh, State Fairgrounds at the Morgan World Championships. So we will tell you which class will be uh, selected by Horseshoe Wire. There will be one class each night, Monday through Friday, so that will be a total of five classes. It will be cumulative, and what we like for you nice people to do is to come into our Coliseum and actually watch the horse show from in there. So this will uh, encourage you to do that. And you bring your own little slip of paper and your own little writing stick, your pen or pencil. You put your name on the top, 
and then at the end of the class, in the lineup, you write down the number of the exhibitor that you think will get the green ribbon, the sixth place ribbon. Then you bring that piece of paper to me, Conky Price, at the Horse Show Wire uh, broadcast desk in the Coliseum. And I'm going to put all those uh, slips of paper in one jar. And you're also going to bring me a dollar for each slip of paper that goes in another jar. And then what happens at the end of the week, we will uh, have a separate jar, a third jar, with the names of only the, the, the contestants who have picked the correct sixth place exhibitor and it's just going to be tons of fun and it's not easy there's a lot of luck involved and so those names go into a separate jar and at the end of the week we'll have a drawing and that person whose name uh, is pulled out gets half of the money in the jar and we think because it's going to run for five days and it's going to be very popular because you're going to tell all your friends and neighbors to come in the coliseum and pick six come in the coliseum and pick six and bring your dollar and your slip of paper so at the end we're going to have lots of dollars in our jar and that person whose name is drawn will get 50% of those dollars. Now you ask who gets the other 50% of said dollars. And we have another concept that will run simultaneously Monday through Friday. Uh, we invite our stables to nominate their grooms, a groom. The project is called Grooms Are Great because we do think grooms are great. And without them, our horse show wouldn't function because our horses depend on them for their care and custody. So each stable can nominate as many grooms as they like on an individual basis. So they would write down their stable name, their groom's name, and submit a paragraph to me about why their groom is great. So bring it up to me, uh, or if you see me wandering around the grounds, which I absolutely will be doing all week. And then I will recite the uh, paragraph and acknowledge the grooms on Horse Show Wire live stream. And at the end of the week, their names go in a separate jar. And the name that we pull and select will get the other 50% of the money, and it'll go to the groom. So we think those are a couple of projects that'll uh, instigate a lot of fun during the week and uh, generate a few bucks. So, and if you have any questions, uh, go to our webpage, horseshowwire.com, and uh, go to the Facebook link and write your question in the comment line and it comes to us in real time and we can get right back to you so thanks so much and obviously it only applies to people here uh, on the showgrounds uh, but the rest of you at home certainly can keep track of it and uh, see if you can come up with pick six as well so uh, we're looking forward to it and uh, welcome 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 we'll be in touch with you all the whole rest of the week
Dragon. It's Dragon Speed Sea Dragon, owned by Richard Hansen. From Edmond, Oklahoma, Dragon Speed Sea Dragon in World Championship form here on Monday night. Would you send them out with your applause? this miraculous invention that separates our side of the room from theirs. Listen. Now you hear them. Now you don't. Every family deserves a two-room suite. Yeah, it's pretty great. I always stay at the Candlewood Suites Hotel. I don't like to feel like I'm traveling, and they have such a casual vibe here. So I've made it my home base. Plus, here, they have the Candlewood cupboard, the gazebo grill, a lending locker, washers and dryers, free, and they're pet friendly. Live, work, and relax on your own schedule and make Candlewood Suites Hotels your home base. I am with Austin Buddy Wagner <laughs> here in uh, performance makeup ring number two, right? Six. Six. My math is not doing very well, well here, but, you know, the first day of the horse Absolutely. show. Absolutely. And uh, what is your job description, sir? My job description actually is to get these riders from the warm up ring into the ring to show, make sure that they're all here, make sure they're all try to get here on time, and just to kind of keep this end of the show running. How is it that you know how to do this? Do you do this at any other shows? Uh, several shows, and I've been doing it for about 25 years. It kind of comes natural. I'm used to working with some pretty good announcers also in the past that's helped me, uh, help me kind of get this all together. Yeah. What I'm standing to my right. <laughs> Well, I've worked with Buddy in um, Florida at, the, at our shows in Florida, but um, Buddy is the paddock master at the Saddlebred World Championship Horse Show at the Kentucky State Fair in August. And Kansas he, City. And Kansas City, yeah, right. The American Royal, um, that's coming up next month. Right. And, uh, and a huge supporter of uh, horse shows of all size and shape and uh, very helpful in our industry. So what are you seeing is happening that uh, things are coming back in leaps and bounds in the show horse? Things are really, really coming back. Got more and more people interested. Horses of all um, price ranges are selling, especially the medium priced horses from 10,000 up to 25,000 are really doing well. Trainers' barns are full. People are having a wonderful time. And I, you know, there's nothing like having a child in the horse show world. It's a lot cheaper than, than drug therapy. It's, it's really great. It's, it's great. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Thank you you are the best. Have a, have a great show. <laughs> Thank you.